Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. This is video one of a series of videos on React Hooks. Today we're going to take a look at Use State. Let's head on over to the React Docs. The link will be in the description. From the landing page, you can get to the Docs, really great tutorials, the blog, and a community where you can get support. React is extremely popular, so getting an answer to a question is really easy. Let's click on Get Started. Here we'll find some really useful links. Let's head on over to Hooks and Introducing Hooks. Today we'll be creating a simple counter like you see here in the docs, except we'll be refactoring ours a couple different ways to understand all that UState can offer. Let's navigate to Code Sandbox. The link will also be in the description. Click on Create a Sandbox. We're going to choose React for our project today, but as you can see, there's a lot of different platforms and frameworks to choose from. And there you go, we have a React project up and running. Let's go over to the right panel and take a look at the SRC folder. There are three files. Styles.css, which are the global styles for this app. Index.js, which is where we bootstrap our app. We'll be taking a look at that in a later video. And app.js, which is the file we'll be working in today. Let's give ourselves a little bit of room. The first thing we're going to do is remove everything from inside the div. Here we're going to add two buttons. Let's create our first one. We're going to make one a plus, the other a minus. Okay, let's add a div with the starting value of our counter. So everything is showing up here. Let's try and increment. To make things interactive, we're going to need the help of JavaScript. Let's import useState. I'm going to be using deconstruction to get useState from React. If you're not familiar with deconstruction, you can head on over to the docs. There are some great examples there. The link will also be in the description. Now that we imported useState, let's use it in our app. We're going to use the construction again, but this time with an array. Let's call our value count and the function set count. And that will equal use state, which takes an initial value, and we're going to set that to 1. Now, below in the div where we hard coded our value, let's add our new variable. And let's hit save. And there you can see that our counter is now starting at 1. One really important thing to note about hooks is they always run in the same order. This means you can't nest them in other hooks, functions, or control flow statements. For example, let's nest it in an if statement. Even though the condition is always true, you get a reference error. Okay, let's get rid of this and let's have the counter start at zero. If you ever need more information on a hook, click control space on or right after the hook and you'll get more information. Here you can see that use state takes an initial value and returns a value and a function to update it. Now that we added state to our app, let's add the ability to change our state with an event handler. Here we're going to use on click. The name says it all, it's going to fire when the button is clicked. We're going to pass it a function and we're just going to call it handle click, which we'll create in a second. The editor is going to get really mad at us because the function doesn't exist right now. Let's create the function. It's going to be pretty simple. We're just going to call set state within the function and we're just going to add one to the current count, which right now we have a zero. Keep in mind you can't use plus plus. This alters the state directly, which is not allowed. So if we check the button now, we'll see that it's working. Cool. Okay, let's add an event handler to the minus button. But wait, handle click only adds to the counter. We're going to have to make it a lot more versatile. Let's change it up so that it can take a parameter. I'm not feeling very creative, so let's just call it value. Okay, now that we have that set up, 
For it to work in our onClick event, we're going to have to wrap the whole thing in a function. Now we can add the value. For the Add button, we're going to choose 1. And let's copy this over. And for the minus, we're going to choose negative 1. Now we can replace our hard-coded 1 with value. And let's see if it works. Great, we have a working counter. OK, now here comes the refactors. First, let's take a look at our onClick event. This is a really simple app, and right now we could just call setCount right in our event handler. Let's try that out and see if it works. Everything works the same. So, as you can see, you can call setCount directly in the event or create a function to do that for you. Let's try a quick challenge. Pause the video and try to add a reset button. Don't worry, the solution will be here when you get back. Okay, great. So we already know that we're going to need a button with an onClick event. And since this situation is pretty simple, let's just add the set function directly in here. So we're just going to set count to zero. That's really all the reset button does. So it's showing up, but let's see if it actually works. And it does. So you might be thinking, what if I don't want the counter to go below zero? Well, we can do that. Let's change up our set count call and pass in a function instead of a value. In that function, you're going to get the previous state as an argument. And whatever you return will be the new value of your counter variable. Let's return the previous state plus the value. Let's take a look. Cool, it's doing the exact same thing it was before. Now let's add the logic to prevent it from going below zero. I'm assuming, of course, that we're working with integers only. If previous state is less than 1 and is a negative number, we'll just return previous state. Let's try it out and see if it goes below zero. So let's add some, and it's not going below zero. Use state, like our set function, can also take a function as a parameter. Let's create a function and call it um, init count. Make sure you define this outside of your component. Let's add a console log and let's log init count. And let's return an initial value of 10 just so that we can see the difference. Great, so now 10 is showing up. Let's refresh our display panel and see if it's logging out. Yep. Our function is running and initializing our state. Now let's change it back to zero so it makes a little bit more sense. OK, so you're probably thinking, what about more complicated state? If you've used class-based components before, you probably would do something like this. You would create an object with key value pairs. Let's add a name property to our object and rename the value to state and set state so it makes a little bit more sense since we have more than just a counter. Let's make sure to refactor all of our set functions in the code. We also don't need this if statement anymore, so let's get rid of it. We also need to refactor our return statement because we're no longer returning a simple value. Instead, we're returning an object with a key of count, and we're going to get the count from the previous state and increment it by 1. Let's not forget to refactor count within our div since that no longer exists. We need to get count off of state. And on top of count, let's add the name property. Now let's change back our plus function to use handle click. And let's comment out the reset button for now. All right, that looks good. What do you think? Will this work? Let's test it out. We have a problem. The count is working as normal, but the name is now gone. Let's get rid of this side panel. And let's make some more space. Our problem is in our return statement. Currently, we're returning an object that only holds the property of count. This means that we're overriding the whole state. Let's add the spread operator to previous state, and let's see if everything is working. Yep, the counter is working, and the name is staying persistent.
Thanks to useState, we can handle small pieces of state at a time. So let's refactor the object into two separate pieces of state. Okay, let's refactor our set function and then our return statement to what it looked like before. Also, let's not forget to change the name of our variables in the divs since they no longer live on an object. Let's just do a sanity check to make sure everything is working, which it is. So you might be thinking, what happens when you just keep adding pieces of state till it becomes unmanageable? This is when you would bring in another hook called use reduce, which we'll actually be covering in another video down the road. A question that you might be asking yourself that doesn't pertain directly to use state is how do you pass props from one component to the next? Let's make our last refactor of this video and create a new file called button. From inside our button file, let's import React from React and let's export a default function. Within this default function, let's return and actually let's head on over to AppJS really quick and copy and paste some of our work. So now we have our button in here, but there's a couple things that don't exist in this component. Let's deconstruct handle click a title, and a value from props. I know they don't exist right now, but we'll create those in a second. Let's replace our hard-coded values with title and value. Let's head on back to app.js, and we're going to need to import our new component. So import button from button, and now we can use it in our app. Let's just change this tag up to use our newly created component. Our button component expects a couple props. First of all, let's make it a self-closing tag. And within it, let's pass it handle click, which lives in our app.js component, the title we want to use, and the value we want to increment by, which we're going to set to one. Let's double check this and see that everything is working. And it is. Great, so we just made a reusable component that we're passing props to. We've done a lot in this video, and I think we've really gotten to know use state. If you liked this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to my channel. You can also contact me on social media, all the links will be in the description.